Hello everyone and welcome to Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today. I want to take just a few moments and share with you uh, an article and insight into the scripture that is showing us prophetic things that are taking place today that are pointing toward the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Just before I do that, I want to encourage you to share out this Prophecy Files Briefing. There are many other people that are coming on board and I appreciate your help in getting this word out. With 98% of the pulpits of America not touching Bible prophecy, I need your help to get this out. It is the one motivating factor of hope that is found in the return of Jesus Christ. So help me get this word out on your social media, share it out to your friends and family, and we appreciate you doing that so much. And you can also find out more information at paceassembly.org and uh, more of Prophecy Files that is found right there. But now let's get into this article. Pope Francis has now been rebuked, according to this article, for claiming the heart is inherently good, but Jesus taught to the contrary. This is an important statement that the Pope has made. Pope Francis, this article states, is under fire after claiming that human beings are fundamentally good in a recent interview with 60 Minutes host uh, Nora O'Donnell. He said, quote, we are all fundamentally good. Yes, there are some rogue and sinners, but the heart itself is good. My friends, if this is true, then why did Jesus die on the cross? This is a serious statement that he's made that can cause people to be led astray from the truth of God's word. In the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 18, the Bible clearly states, no one is good except God alone. Jeremiah 17, verse number nine, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things, desperately sick, who can know it? This statement concerning the inherent goodness of man uh, calls into question whether or not a person even needs Jesus Christ in their life. Perhaps we can just add him to our goodness and everything will be all right. That's not true. That is a false doctrine. And that's what we're dealing with today on Prophecy Files Briefing because original sin and the sin nature uh, comes from the very beginning in the book of Genesis and every one of us except Jesus Christ was born sinners because of Adam's fall in the garden. We all partook of that sin nature when he fell in the garden, when he sinned in the garden. Each one of us now have that sin nature. The Bible says we were born in sin and in sin did our mother conceive us, the Bible says. And this is important for you to get a hold of because if we are good to start with, then why do we need the gospel? Why do we need the good news that we can be saved from our sins if we are inherently good? We just stack it on top. That, my friend, is a false doctrine that is now circulating uh, rampantly, and now the Pope has even endorsed the goodness of human beings. If that's true, then why is all the evil happening in the world? Why do we have wars and rumors of wars and evil and violence and lawlessness? Because the heart is the heart of the matter. It is the issue and has been since the genesis of time. The good news of the gospel is this, is that we don't have to stay in our sins because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And when we place our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, he deals with the sin nature inside of our heart. It goes dormant, according to the scripture, as we are... Uh, underneath and given ourselves, submitted ourselves to the finished work of the cross for our sins, asking for forgiveness, and the good news of the gospel comes in, transforms our life. Why is this so important in light of Bible prophecy? Because the Bible says that there would be an increase of apostasy, a falling away from the truth. That's in 2 Thessalonians 2. The Bible says that hypocrisy and much empty profession would take place in the last days, 2 Timothy 3, 5. There would be lukewarmness in the church, according to uh, Matthew 24, verse number 12. There would be those who would scoff at the truth in the last days. You're seeing this take place, 2 Peter 3, verses 3 through 4. And false prophets and great deception, a great increase of false religion and demonized activity would take place, according to the scripture as well. Consider these verses of Scripture quickly. Matthew 24 and 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 
Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, that's apostasy, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Do you know that the devil has a doctrine? It states it right here. Speaking lies, verse 2, in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. Listen to this in verse 3 of 1 Timothy 4. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat. Those two things right now are happening worldwide even by those that are in leadership. We don't need to eat meat anymore. And if we do, it needs to be manufactured meat. And then there are those that say, you should not marry. Don't worry about getting married. Either live together or in your uh, state of sinfulness with homosexuality, lesbianism, all of that, just don't worry. In fact, you don't need to get married anymore. This is the uh, world's doctrine. It's a doctrine of the devil. 2 Timothy chapter 4, preach the word, he says. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come, we're here right now, when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn into fables. This is exactly what is being propagated by a statement from the Pope, from the head of the Catholic Church, to say that human beings are inherently good. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 makes it very clear. For the mystery of iniquity already is at work. Only he who now lets will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, that's the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, now follow this, this is everything you're seeing is coming after the spirit of Antichrist, whose coming is working after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and, will, uh, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, verse 11 says, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. One final scripture for you in 2 Peter chapter 2. But there, will, uh, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, the Bible says. This is talking about the last days. Who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Here's the question. What more does the church need to see before they conclude that we are nearing the coming of the Lord? These signs that I'm speaking to you about every week on Prophecy Files is just a small snippet of what is taking place in our world today. Jesus made it extremely clear that these false teachers, false Christ, false doctrines would plague the last days prior to his coming. He tells us in John chapter 7, verse 31, yet many of the people believed in him, the Bible says, they said, when the Christ appears, will he do more signs than this man has done? Talking about Jesus. That might be the question today. Do we need more signs? Do we need more things to point uh, from the word of God that lets us know Jesus Christ is about to appear? I would say if your eyes are open spiritually, you can see the signs all around you. Now's the time to be prepared and to reach other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, we are not inherently good. We were born with a sin nature, but thank God, Jesus Christ came to deliver us, save us, and set us free from that sin nature and give us a place called heaven that's in our future. I encourage you today to get ready because the next great event will be the rapture of the church. And for those who are looking, he shall appear. Till the next time, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.